Welcome back guys to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing my Cura settings. Now, I have also had plenty of questions about what Cura settings are yours for all these beautiful prints. What'd you do? Here's a video showing me of my last print, what I got with my settings. As you can see, there's been no sanding done on these, no touch up at all. I didn't clean anything basically except for the uh, raft on the bottom. It, it came out super smooth and this is good for a really big print. So it doesn't have to be cosplay, but really big prints, these settings work. I want to do a huge disclaimer. People misunderstand. I had, I had this misconception when I started 3D printing. Having the perfect Cura settings will not make your prints good. Having all your actual printer and your material stuff correct and your g-code well will make your prints better but this is just the general guideline to help those starting out so they're not confused and lost of what they're doing and you guys can see what i accomplished with which settings that i used and you can tweak around with those and maybe improve on them so as you see here we have cura opened up and i'm going to go down every single section and show you to you so quality this is a, for a six millimeter nozzle. So I'm doing big prints. This will be slightly different for you if you have a different nozzle size. So keep in mind that it's subjective. I actually only have a 0.2 layer height and I can push that and make it even drop quality and still be okay and get away with it. But this is for what I run with for the most part. Line with 0.6, it's fine. I believe these are all stock settings. Most of my settings as you'll see for Cura are stock settings. Just go through the setup menu, choose your printer, and run with those settings and slightly tweak on those. That's why I highly recommend don't go crazy on these. Don't look up a three-year-old video on YouTube and follow those instructions. Cura has changed a lot. This is version 4.6.1. As of date, it's the newest one when I'm recording this. But these are the stock settings that I suggest going with. Shell, 1.2 wall thickness, and only a two wall count. I've seen people and I've heard people doing a three wall count or going higher. Don't need that for the prints that I'm doing, at least for the Iron Man suit. Two has been more than fine enough for me. I'll scroll down here, but I'm pretty sure I did not change anything really at all. This is all should be stock settings, except for the Z seam alignment. I use that for the sharpest corner. It Sometimes you see these kind of little dots on the surface of your prints. That's the Z-seam alignment. And when you do the sharpest corner, it's all going to be in one line. It's really nice, and you can easily sand it off all in one turn. Um, I believe the rest is fairly the same as usual. So there you go. That's my quality. That's my shell. Infill. This is subjective. But for my prints, I like the gyroid pattern. It's the best. It's been working really well for me. 5% infill density is all I need. I wouldn't go higher. I've done prints completely hollow with no infill density. The transparent uh, Rick Sanchez worked out fine. You don't have to push your infill a lot when you have a lot of walls. But if you don't have a lot of walls, you might want to take that. Other than that, I don't believe I changed any other setting here. I'll slowly scroll down for you guys to see. You can check with yours, but these all should be stock. These all are stock settings for my printer. Material. This is subjective, okay? You want to tweak around with depends on what PLA you use. I like going as high as it can go for my material, 220, and I go 55 with the build plate temperature. You can go lower if you want on that, but this is what I go with. I don't believe I changed anything else at all. I left these as stock. Moving on to speed. This one's also subjective. Now what I did learn through 3D printing is how you orient your prints, not just for your supports, but also for your prints, changes your speed. So, my nozzle head is usually going right here, from left to right. The bed moves forward. If I have a print that's almost in a straight line, or closer to a straight line going this way, it's going to print in a lot faster, a lot easier, because the nozzle head is moving that direction, not this direction. Try to align your prints this way in general, but... Um, for those prints that are really straight in this way, like a face masks or some sort of wall, whatever it may be, you can go really high, up to 70 millimeters per second. Um, lowest, you can go 50. I usually stick around between 55 and 60-ish. That's been my sweet spot, but like I said, you can really push the speed on your printers. 
depending on your model and what you're printing. Travel. I do have retraction enabled. I know some people sometimes turn that off. Don't do that. I believe all of these speeds are exactly the same. I really did not change those. I know I changed combing mode. It just gives me a lot cleaner prints. I did change comb, comb, combing mode, excuse me, to all. It's worked really well. I also turned on Z-Hop when retracted. It helps globs not to form and for the printer head never to hit the print. It helps all of that out. So that's what I have turned on for that. Not much else with the travel. Not thing crazy at all. For cooling, I don't believe I changed a single thing. I think everything is exactly on stock. I've had no problems with my cooling. Moving on to support. This is the most subjective part that I'm going to cover for Cure Aesthetics today. Your supports will change depending on what model you're putting in here. I have a video. You can see it up right here in the corner. It got, talks about how to orient your prints for supports. I talk about that specifically for bigger prints, especially my cosplay suit. But in general, you can really push this right parameter right here. 70 degrees is as far as you can push it, at least on my printer. You think it won't work when you print it, and it does. Keep pushing that as much as you can. Don't go over 70, I would recommend. You also can do custom supports. I add that for Cura as an extension, but that other video that I mentioned covers that a little bit better. I go with triangles for support pattern. I just like that. I actually did 0% for support density, and that's been fine. It's used a lot less filament, and it somehow works, so there you go. Those are my settings there. I don't believe I've messed around with much else here. I believe all of these should be stock as you see them. If you're not seeing some of these options on yours, what's going on in Cura is you have them turned off from your view. So you just go to your settings, go to configure setting visibility, and right here is all the settings that you want to hide or unhide and look for. If you can't find it, you can always search for it here too. Moving on, build plate adhesion. Build plate adhesion is also a little bit subjective. If I'm printing something very thin and small, I'm not even gonna do anything. I'm gonna have nothing at all for build plate adhesion. It's kind of hard to get my prints off, but it works. If I want to have a little bit easier time, I might add a brim. Now for the big prints, I always have a raft. It helps out my bed leveling. It's easier to get the prints off. It works, and it's also, I can use the raft sometimes for my harnessing system for iron man so that's been useful as well um there is 15 millimeters on this one but i go between i think i've pushed it as low as eight and i don't think i've ever gone higher than 15 10 to 12 has been usually my sweet spot i don't believe i changed much other raft stuff i haven't needed to moving on to the next i don't have dual extrusion so i don't need to mess with that neither do i have any issues with mesh fixes don't go with that I don't really use any special modes. Those are there. I believe those are all stock. Experimental. There's only really one that I mess around with experimental. It's the tree support. When I had Cura 4.5, this really worked well. Now, I'll warn you, when you hit slice and you have tree support turned on, it takes a very long time if you don't have good computer hardware. This is very graphic intensive computation, so keep that in mind. I will mention what you want to do for tree supports if you want to mess around with those. Set up your normal support stuff. So these settings right here are going to translate to the tree supports. Uncheck that box and then check the box for tree support. And it's going to use all the settings you have for normal supports for the tree supports. You don't want both checked off. You probably don't want neither checked off, depending on what you're printing. So that's what I have learned. Tree supports sometimes in rare cases can help. Especially if you don't want to take the time and put in custom sports, make sure everything is set up well. I don't believe I changed really much else with that. That should be all stock. And yeah, that's pretty much all of my Cura settings. If you find this video is helpful, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, you want more 3D printing content, hit the subscribe button down below and the bell note for notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video.